Hello, ladies and gentlemen, to Vector Club Weekly, the show dedicated to giving you an inside look into MLP Vector Club and the crazy thought processes that go through our heads every day. Uh, my name is Rainbow Plasma, and before I start, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a breakdown because this is the pilot episode of what I hope to become a weekly video podcast thing of what's it. So it might be a little bit longer than usual episodes. We'll have to explain each section. And uh, I want to start out here by introducing everyone because I know with audio only stuff, you can kind of get mixed up with everyone's voice. So I'm going to give you an intro here and then I will introduce my three other lovely gentlemen that are joining me today. So uh, my name is Rainbow Plasma. I am a group manager at MLP Vector Club. I've been vectoring for about two and a half months uh, since the beginning of March. And my favorite pony is Rainbow Dash. So there you go, guys. You can introduce yourselves. All right, I'll go. Um, <laughs> hi, I am My Little Pinky Dash, or MLPD, or PD, or whatever else people have been calling me. There's a few names going around. Um, I've been uh, vectoring for, I don't know, four months, five months, not really that long. Um, my job at MLP Vector Club is Vector Inspector, so when you guys submit, or if you submit a vector, or if you, you know, submit a, a, a membership request, I'm one of the guys that look through it and decide, um, find errors, let you know. Stuff like that. Favorite pony, obviously Pinkie Pie. Um, yeah, moving on. Oh, and Australian, so I'm the only one, I'm the only one with an accent. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a local Australian, so. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Flutterguy317. Um, I've been vectoring for about two months, maybe a little bit longer. Um, same amount of time as Rainbow Plasma, actually. Uh, I'm a vector inspector. Uh, with the group. So just like My Little Pinky Dash, I basically will take a look at all of the submissions and offer critiques and uh, basically just how to improve on your vectoring techniques. And my favorite pony is Fluttershy. Okay, I'm really excited to get to Burned because everyone's favorite pony is really, really obvious up until now. So now it becomes like a huge pressure spot for Burned. Go ahead. All right. Um, my name's uh, Burned01. Uh, I've been vectoring for, I guess, a little bit longer than either you guys, maybe about three months now. My I major in Photoshop, but I'm learning other programs. Um, for Favor Pony, I've always been struggling with that because I don't familiarize with any of them, but I'd have to say my favorite pony by far is Rainbow Dash. Yes. Yes. Winners. My okay. second favorite. <laughs> I can tell with your name. You've <laughs> even got them in order. I do. My little pinky dash. <laughs> All right, so the first section that we want to go through here uh, at Vector Club Weekly is news, where we kind of overview the stuff from last week and kind of news around the groups in case you happen to miss stuff. So, uh, Flutter Guy, why don't you start us off with that? Sure. Um, we actually turned one year old. Uh, the group in general turned one year old on April 29th. Um, so we decided to throw together this large community background project, which actually turned into multiple community background projects. Um, so basically, we've opened up to all of our members uh, to kind of help collaborate on creating these awesome backgrounds. Um, we're actually on the second one right now. Uh, the first one is almost done, seven-eighths complete. And the second one is a bit more complex, so it's it's got 20 different parts. So there's 20 different artists contributing to the background. Uh, and so far, it's it's looking really awesome. And I believe we're planning on doing one or two more. Um, so feel free to, to try and hop on, on one of those, uh, if you qualify and actually just, um, a quick note about that, the background projects, um, we have set up a special DeviantArt account, uh, where we will be uploading all the projects. So, uh, check that out. There's a link in the description. Yeah. Um, one thing of note, you have to use Inkscape for those. Uh, I do not use Inkscape and I participated in the first one and it basically caused another one of our group managers, Darkow. He, he. <laughs> He had to go and change a bunch of stuff. So make sure you're using Inkscape for that. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm pretty sure Dark Owl will strangle you. <laughs> yep. All right, who wants to go next? Um, I'll go. So, yeah, guys, we have a Steam group as well. Um, it's pretty awesome. It's it's usually one or two of us admins in there as well as, you know, other people as well, just uh, group members and just random people from Steam. I've seen a couple. Um, it's, yeah, just come talk to us about pretty much anything there's, Always one or two mem uh, managers, managers, group admins, vector inspectors, one of us in there. Whatever you want to call them. <laughs> one of us in there. Encourage, 
encourage anyone if they're looking for help or maybe uh, tip on a vector and they need it real quick, maybe stop in there, see if there's a vector inspector can help them out. That, that's right. I mean, we're there to talk about anything. If you want help, give us a yell, whatever. Talk about games. There's usually one of it. We usually got games playing at the same time. I know I've got Portal running a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. I just want to remind people, um, hop in the chat because we see a lot of people in the Steam group who are in the Steam group, but they don't hop in the chat. So if you're if you're available to talk, man, we're usually in the chat and uh, we're open to just to talking about anything. That's all I've got to say. Just yeah, come join us. It's MLP Vector Club on Steam. Yeah, I'll th- I'll throw a link. Um, all yeah, I forgot to explain this, but anything that you see on this show or most of the stuff that you see, you know, when we're talking about the background projects or the Steam groups or stuff like that, we'll throw those all in the description of the journal that you were linked to from this. So if you want to just uh, take a look there and also in the description of the YouTube video that you're looking at right now. So uh, if you want to go to any of these things, there should be links there. So it makes it easy for you guys. All right, so Burn, do you want to round us off here? All righty. In our next bit of news, uh, we recently uh, put up a journal post, uh, or Darko put up a journal post for a proposal to DA for better vector format support. And basically what that was about is right now, uh, DeviantArt hates working with vectors and SVGs. It does horrible things to them in the previews, turns them into JPEGs and things like that. And it, it makes it a hassle for us because our members can't upload their SVGs simply. We require them to do an image preview for people to work with quickly and then um, uh, upload their SVG work file. So basically what Darkow mentioned in his post was uh, basically a plea for DeviantArt to use something called HTTP content negotiation which is basically just a simple little programming thing, which um, when you go to a link, your browser will talk to DA and, and DA will ask your browser, what do you like What do you like using? What do you like viewing? And if you're using Firefox or whatever, it'll say, I like PNGs. And we'll go, okay, so, cool. So I'm going to export this SVG as a PNG for you. As simple as that. And then if you go to this to a link, there's actually a, um example on uh, the... A journal post uh, for Wikipedia what they use and it has a little vector of Reddit uh, the Reddit logo and up at the top it says 3000 pixels you can change that to whatever pixelation you want so people can export PNGs at whatever pixelation they want and this saves DA so much space right now your average um, image is like for for 6000 6, K to 10,000 K or 10 K rather is one to two one to two megabytes in size, which is insane, and SVGs are like 44 KBs, so it'll save so much bandwidth on the DA servers that it's ridiculous. So if you are interested in helping out or know any way that like we can help contact DA, um, let us know or let DA know. But uh, please, we're asking no one. Uh, we're asking people not to spam them or go spam the help format or anything like that. Just useful ways to help out would be awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty inconvenient to upload two files for every single vector. So we're hoping to be able to get that and fix that. But who knows? We'll see. Uh, and the final bit of news, which I'll be producing, is we've got a new featured artist on our page, which is like the first time that's happened in probably three months. So uh, we're going to try to be more consistent with that, especially now starting this podcast. We're going to try to get about once a week, maybe maybe once every two weeks, new featured artist. So the featured artist this week is a person by the name of Time Impact. And uh, here's a couple of examples of what they have. They have a really cool vector of uh, Chrysalis, the reveal of Queen Chrysalis. A uh, very good background. Uh, that could probably fit as a wallpaper as well. Um, he also did a an adorable Philly Twilight vector that was very, very well done. Um, so go check that out. And finally, he did a uh, actually animated, uh, well, an animated vector, so a, kind of like a GIF. But it looks quite spectacular. Um, and, you know, we don't usually see that many animations done, so I, I thought I'd point that out because it looks quite good. So if you want to check out more stuff by him, then feel free to check out his gallery. Again, that'll be in the description of this video. So the next section that we want to do here at Vector Club Weekly is a critique section where we take critiques from the community, uh, vectors that you guys suggest and that you guys want us to critique, and we will do kind of like a live critique uh, to let you guys know more about how we critique stuff and um, what the process is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like a live critique right now. So we have an example vector from none other than someone in this room, My Little Pinky Dash, who is nice enough to lend us one of his old, old vectors. Very old. <laughs> you'll be able to see you'll be able to see it on the screen right now, and we will we will 
use that visual aid to kind of help you guys when we're talking about the vector you'll see on the screen. So, uh, Piggy Dash, do you want to start off with anything that you see in this vector that is wrong? Or because I know I know you you look at this and you go, <laughs> Ugh. all right. Um, I'll start by saying that it was done by um, it was first off I did it as a hand sketch, so I did it by hand first and then vectored it later. So there's um, because my drawing is fairly horrible. There's um, couple of couple of uh, carryovers from that things like uh, the positioning of the eyes and things and the um, anatomy shape that sort of stuff it's just carried over from that so um the what i can tell straight up a couple of wobbly strokes no pointy ends which is a big thing for me <laughs> burn will be happy burn will be happy to point that out <laughs> yeah that's always the big thing i go for and look for is do what do the ends of your strokes look like are they pointed are they square or are they round all of mine are round on this one. Yep. Yeah. Um, in the show, they hardly ever use rounded or points. It's always usually comes to a taper. That's the thing, though, because whenever you look at reference pictures, especially low quality reference pictures, mm -hmm. it's hard to tell whether or not stuff comes yeah. to a point. But for all of these strokes, so if you're looking at, for example, a good one is the end of Bon Bon's chin, and um, you'll be able to see there that that comes to a rounded edge. You really need to make that taper into a point, and the same thing you'll notice. For any of them, where the legs connect to the body, um, the eyelashes, all of those should come to points to make it more show accurate. The ear is another big one. The bottom of the ear. For eyelashes, it's important to note that um, there are some ponies that do have rounded eyelashes. Rainbow Dash being one of them has three oval eyelashes somewhat. And then, uh, like, but Bon Bon and things like these and Pinkie Pie, Twilight Sparkle, they all have uh, pointed eyelashes. Something that I noticed was right around um, Bon Bon's muzzle, there's two errors there. First one was just one from your sketch, the fact that you're missing the nostril. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty yeah. basic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're missing the nostril, add that in. Um, but also, I was taking a look at the coloring of the mouth, and I've actually got a side-by-side -side example here of the colors that I've collected. And um, your your mouth colors in both the mouth and the tongue are, like, way red. Like, she must have been, like, bleeding or, like, <laughs> biting her tongue or something. It's it's just way different. There's There's pretty consistent colors for, like, the inside of the mouse and stuff so yeah you, you see all, all my later ones have proper colors but this one's all strange <laughs> this was yeah i mean we can, we can point that out we can point that out too that like this is this is done back in january which is before either flutter guy or i was yeah. a brony <laughs> so i mean this is done so long ago that obviously pinky dash is improved yeah and that's that's um a good suggestion is to use a color guide and actually um my little pinky dash has been putting together uh a bunch of color guides for the main six uh, and I, I don't know if you're going to do any other ponies. Um, I, I am planning on doing the background, some of the background ponies anyway. Awesome. Um, because, uh, sometimes the colors get washed out in the show just due to, you know, post-processing, shading, color correction, stuff like that. Um, so a color guy... Plus night shots. If you, if you get a, a screenshot from them at night and you want to get them in proper colors. Yeah, there's different reasons, like the night thing. And then the yeah. Halloween episode, everyone's a little desaturated because it's at night and supposed to be creepy. So it's really handy to have. Something to note, a big thing, is that not all color guides, like we suggest everyone uses a color guide because, you know, you might pick the wrong colors from the screenshot. But at the same time, like, you need to be able to kind of eye it, you know, eyeball it, because there are some color guides that we've been noticing are, that are not that great. Mm. So we have one that we suggest, and this is the one that we kind of run by uh, in our group. Um, so we have that one, and, and then Pinky Dash is one. So both of those will be linked. I suggest highly that you use those because those are the most accurate ones that we can come up with. And it doesn't even come down to accuracy sometimes. It just comes down to, like, how good it looks. Because sometimes I see, like, way oversaturated ones and way undersaturated ones. Yep. So as long as it looks good and generally follows the show, then it'll be accepted. And I'll just, I'll just point out, there are no really, really bright... Um, how, do, how do I put this? Really, really <laughs> bright... Like, like like that blue color, the the you know the really high end blue color. There's there's nothing like that in the show. There's only sort of pastel sort of colors. Yeah. Um, another another way to explain that is the show never uses extreme colors. That's the most what, extreme yeah. example is if you look at Rainbow Dash's mane. Those are the uh, examples of extreme. If you compare Rainbow Dash's mane to any other color in the show, it's always an off color. It's always slightly desaturated. It's always it's always a pastel color is what you would call it. It's part of the reason why OCs always can come out really badly. It's because they don't use like flatter colors. They use like at the very end of the like if they were to use red, they would use like red at 
to, if I'm using like hex codes, red at 255, green at zero, and blue at zero, which is just like pure red, like eye blinding red. Like Big Macintosh is also one of the most extreme colors, but if you look at any background pony or um uh any main character, it's always a little bit off color. Like the only pure white, uh, Celestia is almost pure white. She's still a little bit off, and then Rarity is even a bit off color as well. Yep. Rarity's gray. <laughs> I don't really notice anything else in the vector. I mean, when we go through, like, no offense, Biggie Dash, but for anything, for a vector like this that's not really close to being show accurate, um, we usually go through, like, two or three rounds of critiquing. So, like, we'll do, we'll see, like, the obvious stuff. So, like, points coming to a taper, um, you know, your colors are a bit off. And yeah, that's basic. That's basically it. And then we'll go through another round being like, okay, here are some of the smaller stuff. Like, um, if you look at the top of Lyra's horn, you can see a little bit poking out the right side where you where you went a little bit too far. So like, we'll do stuff like that. And I'll, I'll just say th- this vector here, I, I wouldn't accept it into the group. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, neither would I. Not in a million years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, one thing I do did want to point out, um, we we talked about this a little bit, but your cutie mark on Bonbon is hands down the best Bonbon cutie mark I've seen anywhere. I mean, you did you did the, the other stuff was like meh for your vectoring, but you got that absolutely hundred percent right. Yeah, I think I spent an hour or so just on the cutie mark itself. Just just stick to cutie marks. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Just stick to that for now. Yeah, it's it's cutie marks can be a real pain in the butt. Yeah. Oh. On the color, um, a thing to note for people who, a lot of people in our members make OCs and stuff like that. And if you're making your OC, a good thing to consider is the color, especially when you're making your OC, to make sure that it's not an extreme color and it's really harsh in the eyes. Because that's why they pick those subtle pastel colors, is because they're easy on the eyes and enjoy Exactly. Yeah. And actually, we have been um, a little bit more stringent on accepting OCs as of late, um, just because we've been getting so many uh, submissions and so we we have been trying to make sure that they could potentially make a cameo in the show which is one of the requirements for submission yeah i feel really bad denying ocs like especially if they're good vectors but there's some there's some out there that i, I kind of run by the rule that if it hurts my eyes to look at it because it's such an extreme color then i won't accept it uh, unfortunately we do have to start denying like you said we're getting a lot of ocs so we will have to start denying them on like qualities like coloring and stuff like that we do have a rule that states um, if it if it doesn't look like it would make a cameo on the show and it's not like a crossover or anything, then we can't accept it. So we're sorry if we denied your OC pony, but I'm sure your vector work was very nice. So anyways, that was just kind of a behind-the-scenes look at how we critique stuff. Uh, we're hoping to do this every week. So if you have a vector that you'd like cr- critiqued, you know, one of yours, don't suggest somebody else's, um, but one of your vectors that you think, you know, you want a little bit of insight on, um, feel free to submit it in the comments below. We promise to be nice about it. We were a bit harsh on Pinky Dash because he can take it and we're talking to him right now. So it's no um, and he's Australian. Yeah, so who cares, right? <laughs> Nobody cares. So yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be nice about it. We're not gonna just be like, oh, this sucks, this sucks. We'll tell you what's good, what's bad, and like try to help you out. It's the same kind of philosophy that we go by whenever we critique people's vectors when you submit them to the group. We're not we're not mean about it. We try to be as nice as possible. So send us send us your your vectors in the stuff below and have a chance to get your stuff showcased on the show. All right, so the final section that we want to go through is the Q&A, and this is just kind of a more casual section of the stuff. We try to keep this entire thing casual, a fun thing for everyone to kind of listen to while you're vectoring. And uh, so we want to go through a Q&A. So... Which I am actually doing right now. Yeah, he, Piggy's, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Piggy Dash is probably vectoring the background. So uh, Q&A, basically, again, like before, just leave your comments below. Um, Ask us any questions. You know, you can ask us vector questions. What do you think is better, this or this? Or you can just ask us general questions, and we'll we'll have four babbling idiots talk about <laughs> random subjects. <laughs> uh, for now, I've got a couple of example ones because obviously we don't have any questions from the community because we didn't have a last episode. But uh, there's a couple of questions. The first one is, how did you first start vectoring? And then how did you become an admin for MLP Vector Club? So does anyone want to start us off here? Hmm. I guess I'll start off then. Um, how I started vectoring was, um, I was just really anxious to help contribute in the community. And, um, I had some previous experience in Photoshop. I helped teach it in some college classes and things like that, just as like a TA. And, um, I enjoyed working in Photoshop and I enjoyed helping people learn how to do Photoshop. So 
I started doing some live streams teaching Photoshop and some people, a lot of people came and asking questions about vectoring and I didn't know how to answer those questions. I was telling them how to, that if they wanted to do specific things on their vectors to use um, clipping masks with pat, like brushes and stuff and it was just awful and things were rasterized and I had no idea what I was doing. So I looked up a lot of vectoring and things like that and started frequencing um, r slash uh, My Little Pony vectors on Reddit and looked up a lot of tutorials and like how to do things correctly and um, I started getting pretty good at it and then I started doing critiques and things like that on My Little Pony vectors and it became a hobby and I enjoyed helping people and eventually I had done so many critiques that uh, Dark How Always, managed, uh, one of our group managers, managed, uh, saw one of the critiques that I did and uh, he really liked it so he uh, looked at the group to see if maybe we they could use some vector inspectors and then I was part of the first group of those vector inspectors to come onto the group and then help moderate and incoming submissions and things like that. This guy's an, this guy's an OG vector inspector. <laughs> this guy's first this guy's first gen. It's not it's not a good so, sign in this community. First gen's not a good. Thing. <laughs> basically how I became a a vector inspector was I was just really active in the vectoring community and helping people learn and things like that, and I just really enjoy it. So, all right, I feel like I should get Pinky Dash to go next because you yeah. guys have like a romantic story <laughs> involved with how you both ended up in this in the club. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Tell the original story. <laughs> Tell the original story. Um, so yeah, sort of the similar sort of story. I or sort of. Um, I was I was you know. Just, I saw all this pony stuff coming up on the net, and thinking, "Hey, what is this? Might as well check it out." So, had a look at had a look at the uh, TV show, and you know, loved it straight away, as a lot of people do, naturally. Um, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> and I thought, "Hey, yeah, I might as well try something." So I started, you know, hand sketching and things, which I was really bad at. Um, so you, you can see some. There's still some on my DA page. Well, let me let me direct you to the Lyra and Bon Bon sketch. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, the sketch before that was even worse. Uh, I'm just I'm just busting your balls. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, and I thought you know that's pretty horrible. So I sort of gave that up a little bit, and then I discovered uh, MLP vectors and that sort of hey, you might as well give this a try. I've got I've got Photoshop, might as well give it a try. So I did, and yeah, loved it, and got. Well, what I think to be fairly good at it, and um, started doing critiques same on same as Burn did, and then I got an invite from Dark Out to come join the group, and then I got told later on that it was because Burn invited me. He uh, men- <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned to Dark Out saying, "Hey, take this guy. This guy's pretty cool." Funny story about that. <laughs> and a bit of heartbreak was um, well, first what we we used to do critiques to each other, and since he lives in Australia and, li- and I live on the Pacific uh, time zone. Um, in the U.S., we would have opposite times in which we did critiques, so we had this kind of little competition of who got to do each other's critiques. But I remember I uh, told him that I managed to mention a dark how, and then he got invited. But I went and checked out my notes, and what turns out that actually happened was I was writing to dark how like, "Thanks for the invite. This is such an awesome opportunity to be able to help contribute." And it was like, "You should invite this guy, uh, my little pinky dash. He's awesome." But before I sent the note, I went on to the DA page, and it said. Me- uh, while I was writing that note to Dark How, it said members accepted me as of 15 minutes ago and then Pinky Dash as of like 10 seconds ago. <laughs> it was meant and then to I was be. like, ah, oh. and then had to delete that and then send just the thank you to Dark How. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was meant to be. And then you guys ended up having like, because you guys were different time zones, you guys got on the same cycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys yeah. would kind of match up at. Weird sort of fight yeah. each other <laughs> yeah we had a similar cycle when he wakes up in the morning is when i'm going to bed so when he wakes up and it's his morning and it's my nighttime we'll be doing the same critiques and then while i'm sleeping he's critiquing away and then while he's sleeping i'm critiquing the things and fixing his critique the perfect couple <laughs> so now cute. i don't know i don't know why i'm talking so much crap because flutter guy and i's story is not exactly <laughs> yeah it's pretty similar <laughs> basically I, we're gonna explain it once and then you can just listen to that part yeah. again so i'll explain I actually it. so remember when they first started and i was critiquing their vectors. i was critiquing yeah. that stuff too it's so oh, weird nostalgia it's so weird <laughs> and now i'm higher than you in the club oh, so oh. In the <laughs> i'm kidding that was a joke um yeah so basically what happened was uh flutter guy and i both became bronies at the beginning of february both started vectoring about the beginning of march ended up finding out about um reddit.com slash r slash mlp vectors where we both started um critiquing at the exact same time 
And then we were in like the fourth wave of vector inspectors and it was just us two. So everything that's happened for some reason has always involved the two of us. And like, we never talked or anything. I would just always see his name everywhere. It's like he'd pop up everywhere. Yeah. Same, same with you. It's like, uh, when I was browsing our MLP vectors, uh, you know, you would be like the fir- the top vector on there with the a critique or, or I would always go to like critique a vector and, and you'd have posted something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would I would beat you to it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I don't have enough, I don't have enough time to do that anymore. The, the a great a great resource if you're a beginning vector or I I don't know what's the right term vector or vectorizer Just ve- vector, vector artist, artist is fine, vector yeah. artist. There you go. Thank you. If you are an aspiring vector artist, vector or vector um you can go over to reddit.com slash r slash mlp vectors and there you get you know you just post your picture and then people will give you constructive criticism that's what we all did before we got into the mlp vector club yeah, when you post there make sure to include a tag that uh you're looking for some constructive criticism or critique it's just a ba- a great area that uh, allows for critiques and a great sub for that because DA isn't a very good uh, medium for doing critiques and things like that. You'll see us on there actually uh, occasionally. Now that now that we're admins, we kind of don't have a lot of time to be able to go back and critique more on a different site because we have a lot of stuff coming in. But you'll see you'll see Flutter guy on there all the time. He's the guy giving yeah. lots of critiques. So yep, I try to at least do at least one critique a week or two critiques a week uh, on Reddit. Um, but really feel free to send us a note also on DA if you want a vector critiqued, um, because we'll take the time and, and offer our help. Yeah, it's a similar thing. Contact us through anything. You know, that's why you're promoting the Steam group. You know, come hang out, uh, note us on DeviantArt, you know, talk to us on Steam, all that kind of stuff. We're, we're willing. I mean, it might not be instant. We might be in the middle of something, but for sure within like the next day, we'll usually help you out with that kind of stuff. You know, basic stuff, you know, critiques like that. Uh, and that's basically it. I think that that's everyone, right? Everyone's got their stuff because Flutter Guys was the exact same as mine. Yeah, again, just go back and listen again. <laughs> replace replace his name with mine. But I just like it. hearing his voice. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Um. Just to to point out. Um. I mean, we both uh, Rainbow Plasma and myself were uh, kind of picked up on by Silver Rain Clouds or Silver Fox EI on DeviantArt. Um, shout out yep <laughs> shout out to silver fox you're awesome thank you for making me a vector inspector <laughs> thanks for yeah. suggesting me she didn't make me a vector inspector yeah we're not so, we're not actually looking for vector inspectors right now so if you're thinking of going somewhere and putting down critiques you know do it we we all did critiques because we wanted to mm-hmm. so you know make sure that you're nice and uh in the future if we need people then we'll i guess we could announce via this show that we're looking but yeah for now for now i think we're good and that's that's basically it for this week um, I hope you guys enjoyed this now half an hour long show. Um, let us know in the comments a bunch of stuff. We're looking for a lot of feedback about this show because it's obviously just new. This is the pilot episode. Link us your vectors that you want us to critique. Uh, leave some questions below so we can answer them next week. Um, you know, Go check out all the stuff that we mentioned and for sure give us some feedback. Anything else you guys want to say before we wrap this up? Uh, nope. nope. Sounds right. good. Perfect. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Yeah. See, you. see you next week. Bye. <laughs>